Okay, hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at Tinkercad, which is a product from a leading 3D software design company called Autodesk. They have much more advanced software. Much of it is free to you here at KSU. Tinkercad is free to everybody through the browser. So it's real easy to set up. You can use it on a Mac or a PC. You can even use it on mobile devices, though I suggest you use a full computer because it uses the processor heavily and that will make it run more effectively. So let's do it. Now there are a few things. When you first come you can click this start tinkering button down here and it'll ask you to join a class or create a personal account. We're going to join a class, but what I'd like you to do is go ahead and create a personal account, sign up with email. It will ask you to set up uh, the account this way. The reason it's asking for a birthday is that they work with kids and there are special laws for kids 13 and under that they change their capabilities of the system based on that. So you do need to put in an accurate birthday of some sort and then you sign in. They are a partner with KSU. We do have licenses with them. Use your KSU email account. I've already got myself set up here. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. But when you go ahead and use your Kennesaw email address and create an account. It'll have you verify the account. After you've done all that, you sign in and you'll see there's a link for um, there's a link for you to then join your class group on Tinkercad for the class you're taking. Do that too. That way your professor can see your designs and uh, follow the process and uh, maybe using other capabilities within the, the class group in Tinkercad. So let me sign in. Okay, and I have signed in. So when you arrive, you don't have any particular designs yet. And so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and hit create new design. There are a lot of different things you can do, but we'll start with the designer and here's the designer so we've got our workspace there are a few things to note we have a work plane here the work plane you may notice that you can uh, move it around over here you can click on buttons to choose to view from the top from the left so what we're doing is we're rotating around the work plane and the work plane is essentially the same thing as our bed of the 3D printer. Now, if I hit shift and uh, right click and drag, or on a, if you have a uh, drag pad on your machine, you can actually move the work plane by holding shift and two finger dragging. Uh, if I just use a two finger drag, I can actually move the plane in and out. So here I can zoom. So I'm just using a two finger drag. That's a right click with the mouse, I believe, if you're using a mouse. And if I use a two finger click and then I move two fingers, I can actually arbitrarily move my work plane up, down, left, right. It helps me see my object. So I like having it about the way it is when you first log in. And so I'm going to put it back like that. So that's the first thing to note. I can navigate around the work plane. All right, the next thing over here, I have special options related to the model. And right now I have it set so I can see everything. That makes sense. And then on the left, I have sort of standard options that come with all software like cut, paste, undo, delete, copy. So that's kind of cool too. Now our task here is to build some kind of brand object and I might have some different interests in what I might do. And so I can say, you know, I'm going to start with a square. So I can drop a square in here. 
my particular square, this is the height of the square. So you see there's a little dot in the middle, that's the height. Now if I can't tell that's the height, I can click the front and I can definitely see the height now. So this one, we're not supposed to go over half an inch, which is about 12 uh, millimeters. But since I want to make a keychain, I'm going to bring mine down to about two millimeters thick. And what I'm doing is making a base for my design, whatever it is. So I'm going to, I'm going to take that and then Let's see here, if I go out a little, now I'm at 38. Now if I want to make sure exactly, this is millimeters by the way, and if I'm not comfortable in millimeters, you know, I can uh, switch it to other sizes of grid, but I've got to do a conversion. Uh, and roughly speaking, I can't, I want to keep it under about two inches, so maybe 40 millimeters is about right and 20 uh, is probably good for a keychain. Uh, and now I want to start thinking about what is my keychain going to have. So I want to put a little text on there. I can drag in some text. And when I click on the text over here, I can go and write something in. Let's say that I have a company and it's called my initials DT Incorporated. And so I'll go ahead and shrink this down a little. Obviously, I can change my font a little bit. Uh, not too many choices, but it's enough to actually do some neat stuff. There's no real color variation yet in 3D printing. That'll probably happen someday. Notice I'm just dragging this over to where I want it. All right, now I'm going to zoom in and just take a look. Okay, let's look at it from the front. Now, it's a little too tall. So let's see if I can, oops, that moves it down a little. Let's see if I can get it to the height of my words is 10, and I want to bring it down to about 4. Let's see if I can just type four here. It's kind of nice that you can do that. Now, if I put it on four, maybe it needs to be five. So let's go to five. Oops, did it do it? It did. And now I'm gonna take another look. Looks pretty good. Now, here's the thing. These are two different objects at the moment. The printer does not know that they're the same object. So actually, I'm going to click the Shift button, and I'm going to select both items. And you notice now that I have two items selected, I can come up here and click this button to group. And that turns them into one object together. So now the printer sees them as one thing. That's quite important because it, it makes a big difference in terms of how the uh, printer is going to deal with this object. It won't try to separate them. So be sure you group stuff like that. Now, I want a hole for a key. So I'm going to go grab this cylinder. And notice I have the option to turn anything into a hole. So in this case, or a vacant space. In this case, I'm going to go down to about 3 by 3 millimeters. And again, I can just type in the, the value I want. I'm going to drag this over here. And I'm going to give myself a little hole so that I can put a key in there. And we'll just drag that down. And just like before, I'm going to click Shift. I'm going to select both items. I'm going to group them. And now I want to look at it from the top and make sure I've got a hole. And I do. That's good. Now, just from a design standpoint, uh, when I look at my shapes, I'm thinking that I need something more like it's not quite right and I don't know if if the torus is the right way to do it or not you know could I could I take this and shape this thing to be sort of a, a little bit rounded I could and the way I would do that is I would sort of fit this in Maybe this whole thing 
needs to be a little different. I could ungroup it again, take my lettering. Uh, let's see if I can get my lettering and nope, I have to re ungroup again. Now I can get my lettering because it was in different amounts, maybe like that and take this hole and move it over a little. Maybe the hole should be just about here. And let's see if I can use this as a cutting shape to kind of make a neat oval pattern. A little bit lower, a little bit in turn it into a hole and now I want to take my original hole and my background and my letters and I'm going to group those and now I'm going to take this whole group and this hole and I'm going to group those. And let's see if it did it. And what does it look like? So now let's look at it now I've got this interesting pattern. You see how it did it? Because that little torus shape I was using creates sort of a, a weird thing. So maybe I'm going to undo that. I, I didn't want it to have that kind of pattern. So let's go back, get rid of this one. Let's try the tube. So I'm going to cut it with a tube this time. And let's go to the top. There we go. And then I'll, I'll do that. And uh, that should do it. Okay. So let me do that. Bring it over. And drop it down. Kind of like that. We'll just make it kind of rounded. And then it's a hole. And I'll click Shift. And I'll cut it. There we go. Oh. And I'm going to. And didn't quite get it right, did I? So let's go a little bit taller and shift and cut and save and export it as an STL file. And that is what uh, is going to go into our process of printing. So that's it. Thanks for watching.